Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis presenting case 241 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating challenges with engaging the vessel. There was a guide kink with difficulty retrieving the kinked guide catheter. And also there were diff difficulties with re-entering into the distal true lumen after advancing the guide wire in the extra plug position. The patient was a woman with medically refractory angina. She had previous coronary bypass with occluded vein grafts to the right and the obtuse marginal branch, normal ejection fraction, and lateral ischemia. This is the coronary angiogram that is difficult because there is an atri clip done to occlude the left atrial appendage at the time of surgery that is overlaying the origin of the circumflex. But essentially, the patient has occlusion of a multiple obtuse marginal branches that correspond with the area of ischemia into the EKG. There is no significant disease into the right coronary artery. So we're trying to engage the left main, but then we had difficulty engaging and we had a significant kink on the guide catheter. We were unable to remove it. So what to do? The first uh, step is to try to turn it in the opposite direction and then insert an O35 or O38 guide wire. If that doesn't work, then one can gently inflate the endoflator, the guide, to see if we can straighten it out. And then if it doesn't work, one can use a snare to grab and hold the tip of the guide catheter that helps with untwisting. Or one could cut the catheter and try to pull it uh, through a long sheath. Or alternatively, just um, pull uh, the knot um, through the skin, but that can cause significant femoral axis bleeding. So in this case, we use the nomniflas catheter to go up and over. We got left femoral axis, and then we were able to deliver an end snare into the right iliac artery, and then um, we were able to capture, snare the kinked guide, and actually move it a little further up into the iliac artery. We then tried to untwist it, and uh, that was difficult. Despite multiple attempts, we were unable to insert an O35 wire front or back end through that area of the kink. After multiple attempts, we decided to try something different. We got the guide extension as far as we could. And then we actually used a polymer jacketed stiff guide wire, a Gladius Mongo wire. And then we're trying to untwist the catheter at the same time to try to advance the polymer jacketed wire. And uh, nothing seemed to move, but uh, we persisted at it for uh, a few seconds. And then eventually during untwisting and advancing this Gladius Mongo guide wire, the Gladius Mongo went through. Now still, how to get the, the O35 wire to go through? What we did is we got a, a small balloon to go across the area of the kink, and then we inflated the balloon. And after doing that, we were able to advance a woolly wire that went through the kinked area, and then remove successfully the kinked guide catheter. We were able to get another guide, engage the left main, and once again, we have that CTO in the obtuse marginal, another CTO in another obtuse marginal. The first one seemed to be favorable, um, because it had a nice tapered entry and was decent sized uh, distal vessel. The collaterals did not seem to be very good for going retrograde. So we decided that our options here included undergrade wiring and uh, undergrade dissection reentry without going retrograde. This is a turnpike with a Gladius Mongo guide wire that did not seem to go in the right direction. Eventually, we knuckled it. And then we tried to re-enter using the Stingray balloon, but we were unfortunately unable to because of hematoma formation. And then we eventually used the STAR technique to try to get into the distal trulumen. We then used, uh, once again, the Gladius Mongo with the turnpike to go on the next obtuse marginal branch. And then uh, we were able to do the same into the third obtuse marginal branch. We got flow, we stented uh, the second into the second marginal branch, and that actually did provide a nice result. We had TME3 flow into the second and third, 
obtuse marginal branch. We decided to not stand into the first one because there was extensive dissection and we wanted to let it heal. And actually, most of the time when we use the STAR technique, we do not uh, play stents but let the vessel heal and then bring the patient back for another attempt. But in this case, we decided to stand because we were certain of proximal true lumen location and distal true lumen location and that um, did provide nice flow into the uh, second obtuse margin. So in summary, we had uh, two challenges in this case. The first one was the kink of the guide catheter. When that happens, it is important to not pull hard because you can actually injure the iliac arteries. The first step is to try to untwist the kinked guide catheter and try to get an O35 or O38 wire through it. If it doesn't work, then an alternative approach that worked in this case is to get a guide extension and a polymer jacketed 0.014 inch wire. We used the Gladius Mongo here that successfully went through. And then we were able to get a balloon and then the O35 wire and remove the kinked guide catheter. Now, the other challenge was the inability to re-enter into the distal lumen and to overcome this challenge we did not have retrograde options in this case, so we used uh, the attempt for re-entry with a stingray balloon that were unsuccessful, and then we ended up using the STAR technique for getting flow. We did stand into one of the obtuse marginal branches, but not the other two. The reason is uh, to minimize loss of side branches and instead allow enough time for the vessel to heal. Thank you.